Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Kalay Tobunda from the Development Academy of the Philippines. Welcome to Ashen in Focus. For today's episode, we'll look deeper into the Philippine-Russia relations. Philippine economic migrants began to flock to Russia in the early 2000s. In 2004, 2010 Filip Filipino nationals are registered to be staying in Russia. In 2013, this increased to 4,335. This is the figures according from the Commission of Filipinos Overseas. Today, there are about 8,000 Filipinos in Russia who are when illegal immigrants are taken into account. It should be noted that 93% of Filipinos in Russia are in the capital, Moscow. Many overseas Filipino workers in Russia has professional training, but most of them work in the household service sector as cleaners, cooks, drivers, and nannies. Recently, Russian ambassador to the Philippines, Igor Kobayev, has stressed that Russia is looking forward to having closer ties with the Philippines. Last year, 2016, marked the 40th anniversary of Philippine-Russia relations. What is the future for Russia-Philippine relations and what is its status now? Today on the program, we have on the show Ambassador Carlos Di Sereta, the Chief of Mission to Russia. Ambassador Sereta is a career diplomat with the rank of Chief of Mission 1. He joined the Philippine Foreign Service in 1990. He is a graduate of the College of Law of the University of the Philippines and a member of the Philippine Bar. In the Foreign Service, he was a Deputy Permanent Representative of the Philippine Mission to the United Nations in New York, where he was previously the Legal Advisor and Representative for Disarmament and International Security. He also held the position of Deputy Chief of Mission at the Philippine Embassy in Washington, D.C. While in Washington, he negotiated several agreements and appeared before the U.S. House of Representatives on behalf of Filipino World War II veterans. Welcome to the show, Ambassador Soreta. Thank you, Professor. Glad to be here. <laughs> okay. Uh, the last time we were together, we were in Vladivostok, Vladivostok. for the uh, uh, Asian, Russian, uh, Arab, no, Asian Russia University Forum. Yes, that, that was true. in uh, September 2016. September last year. And, and then it was also, it, it was a side event of the Eastern Economic Forum. A big uh, economic mm -hmm. gathering uh, organized by Europe, the East uh, mm -hmm. Economic Forum. Can you tell us about the, what's the Eastern Economic Forum? Russia has uh, decided to um, put a lot of focus on its relations uh, mm -hmm. with uh, East Asia. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, I'm very happy to be here, Professor Kloy, and thank you for inviting mm -hmm. me. So one of the uh, things that Russia is doing is trying to gather uh, ma and match businessmen, Russian businessmen and uh, business persons from East Asia, Southeast Asia and, and Northeast mm. Asia. Mm. Uh, they gather in Vladivostok once a year mm. and uh, hopefully, and there have been quite uh, a number of ventures that have uh, resulted because of the, uh, this meeting. So that's a yearly gathering? It is a yearly gathering. I think it's on for its fourth year now. Fourth year. Mm -hmm. And we were there, when we were there last uh, last year, there there were thousands of delegates. I think, Great. but there were only seven Filipinos. <laughs> so that says uh, so much about uh, the the Russia-Philippine relations. That's true. Uh, <laughs> from our part of the world of East Asia, um, Japan, Korea, China is heavily into uh, mm -hmm. the Russian economy. From Southeast Asia, Vietnam, Thailand, uh, mm -hmm. Malaysia, Indonesia, um, quite. Uh, quite uh, deep in uh, mm -mm. Uh, engagement with Russia. The Philippines, like you said, uh, were just seven there. Uh, mm -mm. We were seven, then, yes. including the two of you from the Russian embassy from Moscow. So essentially five from <laughs> Manila. Okay. Yes. And to think that uh, Russia and ARP and the Philippines has commemorated 40 years of uh, diplomatic relations, but engagement has been very limited. Why is this? It's, it's really a, a function of the, um, on which side we were in the Cold War. Okay. Pumanig tayo sa West, or sa Americano, at dahil doon, hindi natin na-explore mawang lubusan, except perhaps in the cultural field. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. In the 40 years that we've had relations, uh, doon lang tayo medyo mm -hmm. nagkaroon ng malalim na pag-ugnayan sa, mm -hmm. sa Russia sa cultural field, pero sa ibang areas, sa political, security, mm -hmm. economic, uh, hindi masyado. Cultural and education, we had some scholars mm -hmm. at that time. Okay, and I understand there are very few, if you can, I think you can count by your fingers, the number of Philippine students have studied really in Moscow. So quite quite mm -hmm. a few, yes. Not, not compared to uh, other countries. In mm -hmm. fact, now, for example, there's 5,000 Malaysians taking up medicine wow. in Russia. 
Mm -hmm. So that, that's mm -hmm. quite a bit. And uh, the, the, the eastern part of Russia is, of course, the capital is Vladivostok. And it's just, I think, if it's direct flight from Manila, about five to six hours. Direct flight would be about five to mm -hmm. six hours. So, but to Moscow, it's about nine hours from Vladivostok. From Vladivostok to, to Moscow. Moscow. Yes. But what about from Manila to Moscow? Um, there are no direct flights. The fastest mm. with uh, one stop over is about 18 hours. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not that bad. <laughs> it's, um, it's worth the trip. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you think Russia is uh, looking or acting towards the East? They've had to, um, they have been engaged in the East uh, for quite some time now, and they're intensifying it because uh, the East, for them, especially Southeast Asia, is a growth area. Mm -hmm. So they see it as a source of markets for their products, for their investments. Uh, mm -hmm. They know that Southeast Asia is energy hungry, and mm -hmm. Russia is a major producer of energy, uh, not just in terms of fossil fuels, but of course, they are also a leader in. Uh, peaceful uses of uh, nuclear energy. Mm -hmm. They're a leader in hydroelectric uh, energy. They have built very impressive uh, dams in uh, mm -hmm. uh, Russia. Uh, they're now investing heavily in alternative sources and renewable sources mm -hmm. of uh, energy also. So uh, they see the, uh, our region as something where they'd like to be engaged in. Mm -hmm. But among the Southeast Asian countries, uh, they know very little about the Philippines. Yeah, sadly, yes. Mm -hmm. so what, what little they know are usually stereotypes mm -hmm. um, brought on from uh, the time when uh, they identified us as a very close ally of the United States. But there is a greater interest now. Why do you think? I think there's greater interest now. Our leaders, uh, the President, President Duterte and President Putin, uh, seem to be determined to uh, expand relations and to find uh, opportunities for mutual benefit regardless of um, you know, history is history, and that's mm. uh, past. And uh, I think both leaders are determined to overwhelm, to overcome mm -hmm. the stereotypes that uh, mm -hmm. f we have with each other. Filipinos also have mm -hmm. certain stereotypes about what Russia is. And do you think this is good for the Philippines? I, I think uh, a foreign policy that seeks to engage in a, in a peaceful manner mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. all countries mm -hmm. and with a view to uh, mutual benefit and without necessarily getting involved in uh, uh, one country's problem with another. Mm -hmm. this is a good thing. Non intervention. It's, it's, it's non intervention mm -hmm. and it's a very balanced foreign policy. Mm -hmm. It requires uh, Philippine diplomacy to be a little more sophisticated, mm -hmm. a little more nuanced, but I think we can, we can do it. Mm -hmm. You started talking about uh, foreign policy, and President Duterte has declared that the Philippines, under his term, is pursuing an independent foreign policy. What, what's your definition of an independent po foreign um, policy? I mean, the Philippine foreign policy um, is an independent policy in what's essentially is an interdependent world. Okay. So what it is means is um, it's less dependence on uh, traditional allies, for example. The U.S., the West, okay. Being and expanding our engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's... Uh, it's truly balancing out our interests. So we're not putting all our eggs mm -hmm. in, in one in basket. basket. It's a basket that's, uh, mm -hmm. and it's driven, uh, essentially the value of an independent foreign policy is that driven by our, our national interests, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not necessarily uh, subservient to the interests mm -hmm. of other countries. So you think it's really, uh, for our benefit, if we really uh, move closer towards Russia? Yes, uh, moving closer to the Russia that is never to the exclusion of relations mm -hmm. with others or to compromise. Mm -hmm. uh, it need not compromise our mm -hmm. existing uh, mm -hmm. strategic partners or other partners. So it can be done, I think. Mm -hmm. So uh, how is the Department of Foreign Affairs uh, you know, configurate, configurating its, uh, you know, its actions towards this? We, there's no the structural changes. We're mm -hmm. still keeping the structure the way it is. And I think it's well suited for mm -hmm. our, our diplomats are professionals. Mm -hmm. They have great experience. Uh, they are uh, advancing the, this independent foreign policy agenda mm -hmm. quite well. Mm -hmm. Russia is such a huge country yes, and a huge our country. Uh, embassy is in Moscow, it's in Moscow. Uh, where the majority of Filipinos are mm -hmm. also. Do we have other missions somewhere else in no, Russia? No, we don't have. We have a uh, an honorary consul in St. Petersburg, okay. which is on the uh, Moscow side. And we also have an honorary consul in uh, uh, Vladivostok. 
These yeah. are Russian. Oh, so they're not Filipinos? No, they're not. They're not. How, how can you be an honorary consul, by the way, <laughs> if you're not a citizen of the country you're representing? Honorary, the practice of honorary consuls is uh, quite well established mm -hmm. in diplomacy. Mm -hmm. You look for a very uh, respectable leader in mm -hmm. the community. Okay. And um, there has to be some ties with the Philippines mm -hmm. and uh, a genuine interest to serve Filipinos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and generally, how, how, do, how do Russians view Filipinos? Generally, um, we're still um, emerging from uh, some of the stereotypes that they've had of us. And, but then when they do get to know Filipinos, they're quite happy about it. They, uh, mm -hmm. they seem, we, we relate to them well. Mm -hmm. We have so many similar mm -hmm. values. Yeah, before we, uh, before the break, we were talking about uh, Filipinos in, in Russia, and you said there were about 8,000 now? About, yeah, 9,000. 9,000, 8,000. Mm -hmm. What are they doing there? Well, they're mostly uh, uh, in the service sector. When you say service uh, sector? It's, uh, household workers, okay. uh, nannies, mm -hmm. uh, in um, uh, food servicing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, vast majority are mm -hmm. in these areas and uh, they're predominantly uh, women. Oh, okay. And uh, is Russia a potential labor market for the Philippines? <laughs> uh, uh, right now, it's not a, a potential market because mm -hmm. they do have a certain level of uh, unemployment. Mm -hmm. They also have a phenomenon of underemployment. They have very qualified, highly educated people mm -mm. and are not working at jobs commensurate to their qualifications. Plus, there's also a large supply in terms of the service sector mm -hmm. of former um, from citizens from former Soviet mm -mm. states like mm -mm. Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan the, who, who go to Russia mm -mm. to uh, fill in uh, service sector jobs. But are there professionals also there, Filipino we professionals? We have some professionals, many of them who train there. Uh, what fields? Oh, I've met uh, those, some of them who train in the 70s and 80s in medicine. Mm -hmm. They've stayed on to, to practice mm -hmm. there. And mm -hmm. uh, that's then teachers. Uh, some of them are able to teach mostly in, uh, expat, in schools for expatriates. Uh, what do they teach? English. They teach many subjects. This mm -hmm. is the American okay. school, the British school. Mm -hmm. There are those, like, yeah, that's true. There are those also who teach English, quite quite a few. English is a language that the Russians are very interested mm -hmm. in learning now. There are a lot of English uh, uh, mm -hmm. schools. Uh, Filipinos normally go to the U.S. for education in Europe. H how is the Russian educational system compared to these countries in the West? Uh, they are, they are uh, I think they um, match up quite well. Mm -hmm. The only problem for us is the language. Uh, okay. The Russian language is a difficult language for the academe or for mm -hmm. technical uh, um, courses. So most scholars are required to take a one-year uh, mm -hmm. course in, in to learn Russian. To learn Russian, and mm -hmm. then they're tested at the end of that time. If they if, if, uh, if they are able to uh, learn in earn a degree in Russian, then mm -hmm. they continue. But Filipinos can go there to study. They can. I uh, don't see that many Filipinos going there Why do to you think? study. Uh, it's the language. It's and the language. also maybe in terms of getting jobs back here, mm -mm. it may not be a... Mm -mm. They might want a degree from uh, Western institutions. Okay. When we were in uh, Vladivostok, I remember we had this uh, forum on international security. Yes. <laughs> right? And one of, the, one of the issues raised was the South China Sea uh -huh. issue. Where is Russia in the South China Sea issue? <laughs> the South China Sea for Russia is very important uh, because mm -hmm. a large part of Russia faces, uh, mm -hmm. although it's in the northeast part, mm -hmm. it does face uh, uh, South China Sea. Uh, many of the uh, products of Eastern Russia, particularly in uh, hydrocarbons, uh, pass through the South China Sea. Mm -hmm. And um, Russia also views the region as, like I said, very important for mm -hmm. economic engagement and they want peace in the region. Mm -hmm. So there are two dimensions to their policy in the South China Sea. One is they want it to be uh, solved in a peaceful manner. Okay. And secondly, is they take no sides on the, on the dispute. I remember I asked one of the Russian speakers there, mm -hmm. uh, if push comes to show, <laughs> where will Russia side? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might have to ask the Russians. Yeah. Um, push comes to shove, I think they will 
I'm hoping that they will side with the importance of uh, solving things mm -hmm. in accordance with international law. When you say uh, they're, they're acting neutral, don't they? I, I, I heard they're, asked, they're engaged with some military exercises with China, but it's not in the South China Sea. It's more in the Eastern Sea. Their uh, exercises are, their joint exercises, mm -hmm. um, they're not, and if you look at the content, it's not to, uh, um, for, um, not a show of force. It's not a show of force. Mm -hmm. It's also not designed for a uh, self uh, mutual defense mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's really just uh, to develop goodwill. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's not like they're joint, having joint exercises against uh, mm -hmm. the Philippines or against any other mm -hmm. country. One uh, thing about the Russians, especially for for Filipinos. We, we tend to look at Russians as, you know, very stiff, very stoic, and that's maybe the reason why uh, the relationship is not that warm. It has not been that warm. Uh, do you think? Uh, what can you say about this? <laughs> I, I think we um, there's a lot of stereotypes about mm -hmm. Russians, uh, mm -hmm. not just um, from the Philippines, but uh, uh, it's a function, I guess. Uh, of Hollywood, uh, <laughs> yes, many movies. Yeah, the James Bond villains are Gen mostly Russians. From <laughs> our generation, uh, mm -hmm. James Bond mm -hmm. uh, villains were Rus many were Russians, mm -hmm. and then even the younger generation, mm -hmm. when they watch uh, like the Avenger movies or mm -hmm. Iron Man, mm -hmm. there's there's a <coughs> there's a Russian villain <laughs> behind every tree, and even younger generations, the games, the video games, yes, yes. where it's Call of Duty, Battlefield. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some uh, Russian uh, general hiding, uh, mm -hmm. ready to wreak havoc. So in order for Russia to be more, quote unquote, friendly to the Filipinos, there, needs, uh, there has, there's a need for some of sort of a charm offensive. Do you think the Russians are ready for this? <laughs> I think what we're trying to do is increase people-to-people -people, uh, mm -hmm. contact. We try yeah. to bring uh, as many Russians as we can to the Philippines mm -hmm. so that they can understand us better mm -hmm. and also try to have exchanges for example on academic level yes. cultural mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. we we're doing that we're introducing uh, Russians to Philippine culture the embassy has many activities we're, mm -hmm. we're introducing them to Philippine cuisine and of course we're promoting the Philippines very heavily as okay. a tourist destination mm -hmm. the Russians travel a lot they're one of the top uh, per capita spenders as tourists, mm -hmm. uh, we, particularly because of the long winter season. Okay. They spend, many of them travel to uh, warmer climates. But still very few come here to the Philippines. Very few. We okay. get less than 30,000, mm -hmm. while for Thailand gets over a million. Wow. So as the uh, ambassador to Russia, what's your vision of, for the RP-Russia relations? <laughs> well, uh, taking off from the people-to-people -people exchange, mm -hmm. we really need to uh, increase this um, mm -hmm. efforts to uh, bring Russians to the Philippines have mm -hmm. to be redoubled mm -hmm. and then in terms of trade there are many many opportunities for uh, Philippine mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. in uh, Russia because I've seen it other mm -hmm. ASEAN countries are heavily into the Russian economy they're selling a lot of uh, mm -hmm. tropical fruit uh, a lot of uh, other products that mm -hmm. come from Southeast Asia so I think it can be done and there's a lot of uh, Russian uh, investments that mm -hmm. could possibly come mm -hmm. to the Philippines. Okay, thank you very much Ambassador Carlos Serrata, the Chief of Mission to Russia, and we will Thanks continue well. this discussion. Okay, earlier we were talking about uh, investments to th from, from Russia to the Philippines, and actually uh, the Asian Studies Center here in New York University has, has been contacted by the Asian Center in, uh, from MGIMO, MGIMO yep. in, in mm -hmm. Moscow, mm -hmm. and we are in the midst of uh, preparation for the visit of Russian businessmen here in the Philippines. Uh, what are the possible business ventures the Russians can enter into with uh, Philippine businessmen? It's, uh, first of all, I think it's very important to uh, emphasize that uh, as a growing economy mm -hmm. uh, for the Philippines to sustain its growth we need to diversify our economic engagement we, we need to stay with our traditional economic partners but we need to widen the horizon of our engagement and uh, a big aspect of that is uh, engaging uh, mm -hmm. Russia economically. Mm -hmm. Now in terms of uh, investment uh, Russia is interested in investing in our infrastructure Okay. They have a lot of experience, for example, in uh, 
building railroads and bridges and bridges the, the first time i saw those bridges in, in, in wow. Russia. <laughs> it's as you know russia is a very big country mm -hmm. they had to learn to uh, build railroads very early mm -hmm. and they had to build them very uh, uh they had to build very sturdy railroads um mm -hmm. they're also very uh they're experts at constructing uh, railroads and roads you know, under harsh conditions. Yes. Through uh, whether it's through uh, the uh, frozen tundras mm -hmm. of Siberia or the deserts in the south near Gobi, they've had to link up mm -hmm. the country through uh, road infrastructure. The other uh, uh, investments they want to do, to do here in the Philippines is in terms of energy. Energy. Okay. Energy. The other is they're very interested in helping us develop refining capabilities for our uh, for mines for oh, our uh, not for our uh, metals metals okay we for example were a leader in extracting uh, mm -hmm. metals but uh, we export them as ore we don't go higher to in the, the value chain okay. and refining uh, will allow us to put a step forward industrialization create more jobs mm -hmm. and uh, higher value jobs mm -hmm. Uh, the other thing I've, uh, I know the Russians are interested in is investing in our tourism facilities. Mm -mm. It's because um, in many countries where Russians go, many of the resorts are uh, run or invested in heavily by, by the Russians. Mm -mm. Uh, another aspect is they want to invest in our agriculture, agricultural okay. sector also. Mm -mm. So do you... Th uh, do you think how ready is are the Philippine business people in dealing with Russians? I, I think um, businessmen, our businessmen, they see an opportunity, they'll be ready for it. But uh, there's still much uh, that our businessmen um, have to learn about mm. the Russia. First of all, they have to learn not to fear uh, engaging yes. Russia. I um, think that, that that's, that's a key, so that's key issue here. Building that con necessary confidence is mm. important. And I think we're moving in the right direction uh, mm. because we've set up uh, formal structures for mm. economic discussion, economic engagement, mm -hmm. and the private sector has been very much involved from both Russia and the Philippines. Mm. What's this formal structure you're talking yeah. about? We have an agreement. We signed an agreement with Russia in November 2015 to establish what's called a, a Russia-Philippines Joint Commission on okay. Economic... Uh, this is under your term already? Yeah, yes. Oh. Uh, Joint Commission on Trade and Economic Cooperation. Mm -hmm. It's uh, to be chaired by uh, the Vice Minister rank. Uh, mm -hmm. People on our side, it's chaired by uh, under Secretary uh, Severo Rodolfo. Okay. And in, on the Russian side, it's chaired by uh, Deputy Minister Chubulski. And mm -hmm. they met uh, about uh, two weeks ago. Okay. here in Manila mm -hmm. as chairs. Uh, mm -hmm. The commission itself hasn't met yet. That will happen okay. in April, maybe in Cebu. But uh, they had a preliminary meeting, the two chairs, and they had uh, uh, large delegations from government mm -hmm. and large delegations from the private sector. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, and they issued a joint statement which actually uh, contains a very, very encouraging uh, mm -hmm. development. So it's basically still in the negotiation stage. Or has there been any investment already? It's still, it's still, and the, there, there are some existing investments, very small. But the bigger investments in trade engagement, I believe, will happen soon. Mm -hmm. Perhaps after the JCTEC uh, meets mm -hmm. in April. Okay, so we're talking about this Russian, the uh, Russian mission in March, to be mm -hmm. brought by M, uh, by uh, ASEAN and JMO. Mm -hmm. uh, what do the Filipino businessmen have to watch out for? There's uh, uh, Russia is very interested in, in our part of the world. They see it as a growth area, mm -hmm. and they, they want to get in on the ground floor. Mm -hmm. uh, in the region, like I've said, they're heavily into our other ASEAN uh, mm -hmm. partners. Mm -hmm. I think they may have uh, inadvertently uh, bypassed the Philippines. Yes, in it's so sad. Of, uh, <laughs> it's a bit sad. So if you just look at how deeply they're engaged in other countries uh, in the region, you will also see that uh, these are the potentials for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the uh, issues raised during my discussions with some members of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry when I talked about this uh, Russian mission, one of the questions was, 
Do the Russians have a counterpart of uh, something like World Bank or AIIB Asian? They have, a, they have a they have a export import bank, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they just uh, reinvigorated it, changed the name, and restructured it, and it's it will uh, finance uh, mm -mm. Uh, Russian investments. Mm -mm. So there's financing. There is financing, but of course, Filipino businessmen have to show of course. that the partnership will be mm -hmm. profitable for both. Mm -hmm. They're not coming here for charity or to <laughs> good, just mm -hmm. simply on goodwill. Yes, Although yes. there's mm -hmm. a lot of goodwill developing, the engagement has to be mutually beneficial for mm -hmm. uh, both sides. Mm -hmm. You were talking about this Russia-Philippines Joint Commission, not Commission on Trade and Economic Cooperation. Uh, cooperation. Uh, the Philippines is not necessarily known to be quote-unquote investments friendly because of some of our policies are not really uh, uh, friendly to foreigners so is, is there uh, is this Commission doing anything to you know to uh, lighten up some of the requirements the Commission's one of the objectives of the Commission is to develop better understanding mm -hmm. of each other's business practices each other's regulatory uh, regimes mm -hmm. and I think uh, we're doing a good job of that um, mm -hmm. Russia, Russian investors are, have uh, gone into even countries with even more um, yes, challenging yeah. and restrictive uh, yeah. regulatory regimes. Yeah. So yeah. I don't, I'm, I don't think they'll be. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure they'll find the necessary partners here mm -hmm. that they can um, fully invest and engage mm -hmm. in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. so, uh, during their visit of the, the Russian business veteran in March, they will be going to Subic. So big, because yeah. they see so big as a strategic uh, staging mm -hmm. point for, mm -hmm. for investments. Yes. What can you say about this? We have had actually met with some businessmen who are interested in, uh, mm -hmm. in Subic and setting up businesses in Subic. I also had a meeting with one of the, with the biggest uh, cargo company in, mm -hmm. in Russia. Mm -hmm. And they are interested uh, in uh, looking at both Clark and, and Subic as a hub because uh, one thing that uh, Ru Russia has is it has uh, excellent, they've invested, the com companies have invested heavily in, in transport. Uh, mm -hmm. They are a major, they produce some of the largest planes in the world, some of the sturdiest mm -hmm. planes in the world, and um, they have um, put this into commercial use. Mm -hmm. So you think, uh, is the Philippine industry ready for Russian businessmen? <laughs> I, I, think, I think Philippine industry has shown a, a readiness to um, uh, welcome uh, mm -hmm. new developments because it's necessary for them to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, you, we just can't uh, stay at a, maintain a certain comfort level. I think we do have to take um, calculated risks mm -hmm. and I think in the end it will benefit everyone. Yeah, but uh, Filipino laborers for one are more familiar with you know, American business practice. That's so true. Is there any prepping up that you should do to prepare the Filipino laborers who will be absorbed by this business, by this business from Russia? I think when the uh, businesses or the investments come here, they will comply with uh, mm -hmm. our practices here in mm -hmm. terms of our uh, labor. What about the cultural aspect? Oh, yeah, management styles. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think um, I've met many Russian managers and CEOs. And they are very, very enlightened. They're very mm -hmm. progressive. Uh, these are even, they're using these uh, modern practices even in their production facilities mm -hmm. in Russia. What about the language thing? Yeah. The investors are usually, it doesn't become a problem. Okay. Many of them speak English mm -hmm. or employ uh, middle managers who will be speaking mm -hmm. English. Okay, uh, so the Philippines is more or less ready and I the Russians are coming. So. Uh, Russians <laughs> in are a coming. positive sense, the yeah, Russians are coming to the Philippines. Not in the, the cold war sense. <laughs> <laughs> so the Russians are coming for investments, and we hope there will be more businesses between Russia and the Philippines. I hope so. When too. we come back, we will talk about Russia ASEAN relations. We will be back. So we're back with our interview with Ambassador Carlos Sareta, our ambassador to Russia. Uh, ambassador Carlos, oh, we, we both have the same name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Call me King. King. Okay. My parents name me King. Okay. Uh, the Philippines is hosting ASEAN now, and Russia is a dialogue partner of ASEAN. So what can you say about Russia, 
ASEAN relations. You know, Russia, uh, uh, President Putin has, has placed a very great importance in uh, Russia-ASEAN relations mm -hmm. to the point that last year mm -hmm. he hosted a summit uh, between ASEAN leaders mm -hmm. and, uh, and Mr. Putin in Sochi, Sochi. In, uh, in May. And this was because it was, the, it was also to commemorate uh, 20 years of mm -hmm. dialogue relations with, with ASEAN. Mm -hmm. uh, so he has, uh, Russia is quite uh, determined mm -hmm. to, to engage ASEAN mm -hmm. uh, economically and in terms of uh, uh, humanitarian uh, projects, social projects, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's true. Can you enlighten our viewers about what's this dialogue relationship? ASEAN, what is a dialogue relationship? Yeah, ASEAN is composed of the, the ten, 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 member ten ASEAN states. member states. and. Uh, what happened is they have uh, they decided that as a group mm -hmm. they will engage the world and they okay. started engaging the uh, at first the uh, immediate neighbors the ASEAN plus the the ASEAN plus China, China, Korea, yeah, Japan, Japan. Okay. and then started engaging the major powers mm -hmm. uh, US, uh, yeah. Russia. US first, no, Russia uh, a mm -hmm. little later uh, because they have to sign the, mm -hmm. the taxi, the treaty of uh, mm -hmm. and uh, this uh, then they have projects that promote relations between uh, ASEAN and their countries mm -hmm. and promote uh, mutual interests. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the projects uh, deal with uh, promoting trade, uh, mm -hmm. protecting the environment, um, promoting uh, um, better health care, uh, financing, mm -hmm. many of the things that make life better for mm -hmm. all the countries. Generally, how do you think Russians look at ASEAN? Because uh, at least this is the impression I got when I was in Vladivostok. R R Russia is really, you know, Western focused. Russia. 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 Uh -huh. Do you think that's still true to, up to today? Oh, in terms of policy, well, up to now, Russia needs to focus on the West because of what's happening in, in Europe and okay. developments in NATO. But uh, they are, like I said, they're in, in, in they're much interested in uh, engaging ASEAN. Mm -hmm. And in terms of how Russia looks at ASEAN, mm -hmm. I think um, we're a little, in terms of the ASEAN countries, the Philippines might be a little on the tail end of, uh, because Russia has very deep relations with uh, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, and mm -hmm. all deep economic ties with Thailand, Malaysia, mm -mm -mm. and even Vietnam and, and Indonesia. So and that definitely really leaves out the Philippines. <laughs> and in Singapore, there's quite a number of uh, Russian mm -hmm. uh, large business uh, mm -hmm. interests who have their headquarters in, in mm -hmm. Singapore. So the reason we said earlier is still, still uh, the result of the Cold War yes, conflict. Yes, it's really uh, mm -hmm. reverberations of the, the mm -hmm. remaining yeah. of the Cold War. Do you think there is a, uh, I cannot say renewed interest in the Philippines because there's really uh, not really much interest to begin with. No. So uh, what are they trying to do to cope up apart from catch this, up. the catch-up? Catch up. We are, the, both countries want to base uh, their relations on a clear uh, legal framework, mm -hmm. meaning for every area of cooperation, we're going to have an agreement. Mm -hmm. So we're negotiating uh, a number of mm -hmm. agreements for cooperation in many different fields, whether it's energy, education, mm -hmm. agriculture, even uh, in terms of uh, fighting crime. Mm -hmm. And also we're negotiating uh, defense agreements. Mm -hmm. So this will create the framework for our future mm -hmm. relations. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's really the the relationship between Philippines and Russia. Up to now, many Philippines still look at Russia as uh, a country from another planet. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. Sadly, so, so sadly. So there has to be, as I as we mentioned earlier, there has to be a charm offensive of some sort. Do, do you know of any uh, activity, any plans by Russia to really embark on a charm offensive? <laughs> One of the things Russia is doing is trying to uh, um, promote. Um, its language with, with the Filipinos. So they set up a cultural center in, in Cebu mm -hmm. uh, and where they're teaching uh, Russian language. Okay. They've also funded uh, an ASEAN Russian language uh, program. In Cebu? In Cambodia. In Cambodia. Where they're bringing ASEAN uh, parties there, including mm -hmm. the Philippines, mm -hmm. to learn about the uh, Russian okay. language. Uh, the other thing is uh, they are also um, heavily into uh, promoting their history mm -hmm. and their culture. Uh, we have an agreement with them where they're uh, supposed to have a, a days of Russian culture here. Mm 
-hmm. And I think they did have it. They sent uh, uh, artists and performers. When you say culture, uh, do you think there's what is common among uh, between Russian culture and Asian, co Asian, Asian culture? Can you see anything, any commonality between them? Yes, it's uh, uh, Russian culture is very deep. Uh, it's um, it's in terms of its civilization. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's uh, one of the oldest in, in in Europe, and they have a very strong literary tradition, uh, musical tradition. Uh, artistry, uh, even up to now, yes. uh, even in the performing arts, yeah. uh, dance or piano or ballet, and uh, that kind of artistry, I, I think, uh, exists in, in mm -hmm. ASEAN countries. Uh, we're very artistic people. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is, uh, in terms of ASEAN and, and Russia, uh, both sides have a very deep regard for faith. Uh, oh, really? Yes. Uh, the, 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 for although, believing in a yeah, although uh, Rush, the R Russians are you know communists and communists are you know are seen by common people as you know atheists mm -hmm. is, is that true? Uh, Soviet <laughs> Union um, banned uh, religious practices. Okay. Uh, but now now the Russian Federation is open. Uh, okay. If you go to Russia now, especially Moscow, you will mm -hmm. see all the old churches uh, mm -hmm. open. They've mm -hmm. refurbished them. Mm -hmm. uh, during the Soviet times, these were converted into warehouses, into offices, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, but now they're open, they're um, beautiful, and uh, mm -hmm. um, they for Filipinos uh, when they go there, it's one of the things they enjoy uh, mm -hmm. uh, the churches. Mm -hmm. Okay, actually, I, I was and uh, I'm, I'm, I'll be saying this to you because the New York University is interested in offering Russian language, but mm. we can't find a, an appropriate. Uh, Instructor, can you can, can you? Uh, I think I can. <laughs> can you recommend somebody? I, can, I, I, I won't. <laughs> I know. I, I know a few. I, I won't mention the name now. But <laughs> tell you uh, later. Before yeah. you leave, before from I leave Moscow, yeah. you have to give yeah. me the name yeah. so, and the contact yeah. number. So I, and I'm sure the embassy <laughs> will be happy to uh, give. Yeah. Um, let's talk mm -hmm. to the ambassador. I mean, mm -hmm. Igor mm -hmm. will surely want to. Um, mm -hmm. It's we come. We do that all the time. Even in the Philippines, we teach uh, mm -hmm. Tagalog when we can. Okay. Okay, so uh, in parting, what can you say about uh, the future of Philippine-Russia relations? Well, I'm, I'm really glad that there are institutions like yourself who mm -hmm. are very interested in Philippine-Russia relations mm -hmm. and ASEAN-Russia relations. I think that's a, a right way of uh, moving forward, getting our people to understand mm -hmm. each other and that we really should not fear uh, each other, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of what uh, you might watch in the movies <laughs> or play in your video this games. This is the real life. Uh, real life is they... There's nothing to fear in real life. flesh and blood. <laughs> uh, they want to engage the world uh, just as we do. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to um, um, do business. We mm -hmm. want to um, learn from each other. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we, we need to proceed without that baggage. The baggage is caused by uh, misunderstanding, mm -hmm. by uh, lack of knowledge and uh, Programs like yourself, mm -hmm. like this, and your institution uh, go a long way to mm -hmm. helping us understand each other. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, Professor. Thanks for coming. <laughs> oh, yeah? Okay, uh, this is Ashen in Focus. I'm Kaloy Tabunda. Thank you very much for watching the show. And I'm on with 25. <laughs>